Hi, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker for Unity. This tutorial video will discuss the sky sphere. On Weathermaker Prefab, there is a sky sky sphere object. This is where we will be focusing. I've already got my scene running here, so let's show you what this can do. The sun has already been assigned to this sun game object on the Weathermaker Prefab, and it uses that to do some day night calculations. Let's look at positioning. Y offset multiplier will move the entire sky sphere up or down relative to the camera. So let's go underneath the ground so you can better see how this works. You'll notice that this horizon here basically lines up with the bottom of the terrain. But if I increase the Y offset, <coughs> sky sphere goes up, sky sphere goes down. Change that back to zero. I believe this is a function of the sky sphere's height, so it's a percentage. So when you go all the way to the bottom, the sky sphere is 50% down or 50% up. Typically, you can leave that at zero unless you're finding that the horizon is showing too much. If that's the case, you could bring it down a little bit so that the user can't see that horizon. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just extend your terrain out really far, which I believe is what I've done here. Like the terrain extends for a long ways. So you can also do that if you want, but if you don't want to have to do that, you can bring the sky sphere down a little bit. Far clip plane multiplier. So this is how far the sky sphere extends. Right now my main camera has a 20,000 far clip, clip plane. If I bring this in, the sky sphere will get closer. So now it's really close. It's only 10% away. So you can see if I were to move back a little bit, I think the sky sphere would even start intersecting with the terrain. That's why I need to move here. There, you can see the sky sphere is actually moving there, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty small sky sphere now. There, you can see it. You can actually see it moving across the terrain. So generally, that's not what you want. I think that probably leaving that at 0.8 is probably what you want. So it's extended really far out. You can't t really tell that it's moving now because it's so big. Looks like we've got some weird Unity shadowing glitches. Watch out for that in your own projects. All right, let's move on. Okay, I've assigned a day texture here. Let's take a look at it. It's basically one texture mode that SkySphere supports in WeatherMaker is a panorama texture where the top half is the top half of the dome and the bottom half is the bottom half of the dome. Pretty standard texture type. You'll notice that it's kind of distorted here at the top. That's so that it wraps around nicely at the poles show you that up here so as you're looking up you don't really notice that because it's been pre-distorted uh, another there's many texture options for you let's look at some of them now right now I've set UV mode to sphere but let's start changing that to panorama so panorama I believe just takes your texture as is and wraps it around the top half and then I think the bottom just goes all the way down with whatever the last pixel was so let's look at these textures and find a panorama texture to bring in there we go so we have this great texture here it looks really nice but now let's go underneath the ground and you'll see what I mean by that repeating. So yeah, it's just repeating the last pixel all the way down to the bottom. In fact, I'll just keep it underneath the ground a little bit. Uh, you can also do panorama mirror down, which basically takes the top and mirrors it down. This can look a little bit nicer depending on what your needs are. In most games, the user won't have a 360 degree of the sky sphere, so this may be a good option for you. Let's look at dome. I think I've got a day sky sphere dome day texture here. If you know that the user's not going to see that bottom, the dome texture is actually one of the nicest because it looks really good at the poles and there's no distortion whatsoever. 
Uh, let's take a look at this dome texture here. Now we've got kind of a, an interesting texture here. You can do this in Photoshop by doing a polar coordinate uh, map. You can Google that if you're not sure how to do it. Or your artist can provide you with this style texture if you show them an example. And the sky sphere just simply maps this onto the top half of the dome. Again, I believe there's also a mirror down option for dome. Yep. And then there's also a dome double. Dome double is is a good one if you need a full 360 degree sky sphere. Uh, it provides you the most flexibility when you need the entire dome to be visible. So let's look at double dome day one. So right now this is kind of a really hacked together texture that I made with water on the bottom and clouds on top. Your artist can probably do a heck of a lot better job than I did. This is just to give you a proof of concept of what the texture needs to look like. So let's open it up. You'll see that on the right half you've got the top half of the dome and on the left you've got the bottom half. I mean you can see that I didn't even deal with this nasty seam here. But this gives you an idea. The right half of the texture is the top half in the same dome format and the left half of the texture is the bottom of the dome in that same dome format. The dome gives you the nicest look at the poles but if you don't really care about that probably leaving the default sphere is good enough. And I can go back to sphere day I think it was day one or day two. There we go. This one actually looks pretty good because you've got the nice clouds and then water underneath and it even looks pretty good at the poles. So those are the options for skysphere textures. The same thing applies for the night texture. It should be in the same format. Let's look at this night texture. You can see that it's basically a very subtle star field. So I'll show you how this gets shown in the Weathermaker Sky Sphere. To do that, we need to start making it nighttime. So there's two parameters here worth noting day degrees and night fade degrees. Day degrees basically says how many degrees from zero is it fully day. So if I'm at 95 degrees above the above zero, then it will be fully day. As I drop below that, it will start becoming night. And that's where night fade degrees comes in. So between 95 and 65, it will transition to the night texture. And from 65 all the way down to zero. And as it wraps around from 360 down to whatever values map on the other side of the full 360 degrees, it will stay fully night. And then it will, for the next 30 degrees, fade back to day. Anyway, let's just show you the slider. Still fully day, still fully day, still fully day. Now you're starting to see some of the night texture show through. You can see some of the stars here are starting to poke through. And as we go, there's a very 30 degrees here where it goes all the way to night. You can kind of see that the transition takes about 30 degrees on this slider here. I think this slider is 180 degrees total roughly. Now we are fully night and it stays fully night and it works the same way the other way as the sun goes all the way around. Pretty straightforward. By the way if you're not sure how to do this in scripting the Weathermaker configuration script does all the callbacks for this little configuration panel so I'll poke around in there to see how I'm manipulating all the correct script properties to do this. Okay, so the night visibility threshold, that's worth talking about. Let's make it fully night. If this is set to zero, then the night texture shows all the way through, which is great if there's no light. Say you're out in the middle of nowhere in northern Canada, this is how your night sky would look. If you're in a bright city, you may want to raise this quite a bit higher, almost to the top value. If it's one, then nothing on the night texture shows. And then as you go all the way down to zero, it checks the uh, luminosity of the pixel 
If that luminosity is less than this, then the pixel is not shown. So by moving that up, only the brightest pixels are showing. And then as I get even higher, not even those show. So you can play around with that to do light pollution. Whatever light pollution you want, just raise that night visibility threshold appropriately and your night sky will not show up as much. Okay, so the sky sphere also supports rotation. Uh, if you, for some reason you want this thing to, to spin, maybe for a space scene or some sort of visual effect, you can raise this up. You can kind of see that the sky sphere is now moving. You can change the rotation axis. Right now it's straight up, so it's spinning around the Y axis. But you can switch that to spin around the X axis. Or you can roll it around the Z axis if you want. Or you can do all three. And this is, again, pretty much add these kind of things because I don't know all the ideas people have in their brains. And so I like to add things just in case people need them. So if you have a, a use case where you need a rotating sky, go ahead and add this. Okay, so last but not least, let's go ahead and stop this. We're looking at the sky sphere generation. These parameters probably can mostly stay at default. Resolution of 4 is I've found pretty good between triangle count and quality of the sky sphere. If you lower this down to two, you get pretty big triangles, and the sky sphere actually even looks fairly decent, but an experienced eye is going to be able to detect small things here, so this may not be what you want unless you're on a really low-end mobile device. It even goes all the way up to six, where the triangles are super tiny. gives you the highest fidelity image, but again, that's going to use quite a bit of memory and rendering on the GPU. So 4 is probably the sweet spot you'll want to stay at. Alright, so that's, that's covered all of the scripting properties. There was one more UV mode that I wanted to talk about that you may have seen here, the fisheye mirrored and fisheye 360. So let's just go ahead and pick one of those really fast. So to do this I'll need to get a fisheye texture, so let's find one. Um, let's see, fish eye day one. Actually, let's run the scene so my changes don't get saved. Alright, so we want fish eye mirrored. I'm going to change the day texture to fish eye day one. There we go. So with fish eye mirrored, you get half of the world as your fish eye texture, and then on the other half, you get the same fish eye texture. So this looks kind of funky, but if you've got a VR scene perhaps and you only are looking at half of this and you can't, the player can't turn around, then this may be a decent option for you. Um, let's look at the texture fish eye day one. So it's kind of this bubble effect here and it wraps the bubble halfway around the scene and then mirrors it. <clears throat> okay, last thing is Fish Eye 360. Fish Eye 360 almost works. I've got this weird distortion at one pole that I have not yet been able to figure out, but really this would almost be the ultimate sky sphere because you can get an entire sky sphere and a very perfectly mapped texture looking all the way around if it weren't for this darn thing here. So if you have any ideas on how to fix that, I'm certainly open to it but even if not if the player can only look around almost all directions except right behind them this texture may be a good option because it uses the smallest amount of memory I mean the fisheye is kind of this square texture so it's small and it represents an entire 360 degree view which is great so if you, for mobile devices that would be ideal but if we go back to Sphere, we'll get everything back to the defaults. And I think we're going to call that good. I'm more than happy to answer your questions if you email support at digitalruby.com. 
I love feedback and feature requests. And I hope that your sky sphering treats you well.